Give me one second, gentlemen. One second, okay? Okay. Hello, Ben. What? Hey, what's going on, Bix? Yeah, uh, sorry, guys. We had to jump on here live a little earlier. Uh, for those of you in the chat, you're 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 way early, and you're earlier than everyone else. And it's because we're early. And uh, everyone here, since you're actually watching my channel, I'm Bitcoin Ben. Everyone knows Big Swear, and everyone also knows Reggie Middleton from, I, uh, from like back in the day. I actually saw you on like CNBC and uh, uh, like Fox, I think, a few times. But you've you've actually been around the economic media and economic world for. I don't want to give away your age, but you know, and quite too. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> so, everyone, welcome to the show. And uh, and for those of you that are not aware of the situation with Reggie, uh, he had some legal issues. We're not going to be talking about that very much uh, at all, really. Uh, it's it's an issue that was resolved. Whether you like it or hate it, it is what it is. And uh, but we are going to talk about his platform, and his platform is what's revolutionary. And uh, we were actually, we were actually talking off air, and nothing has changed, as in the platform, from what I see as its actual value uh, of of use. It's it's its use case hasn't changed. Now, uh, Re Reggie, would, would you take a couple minutes, introduce yourself to those who haven't you know, seen you, and, uh, and give us a, uh, I g g guess, like what's going on with the Veritasium site, and maybe some insight on what was and what is now the structure of your plans forward. Okay. Um, just want to clarify, the legal issues were civil with the regulatory agency. It wasn't murder or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you felt like it, Reggie. You felt like okay. it. <laughs> okay. Well, you were um, you uh, <laughs> a, a disagreement among things regulatory, capital. Yeah, I think we've lost him, Ben. The FBI got him. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> what, was the last you heard? what was the last thing you heard? Uh, the last <laughs> thing we heard was <laughs> regulatory. They've got me. Call for help. <laughs> you know, send, send in somebody. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, it didn't happen just like that, at least not yet, okay? <laughs> um, so, regulatory uh, ambiguity, lack of clarity, I think that's the most PC way of putting it. Um, hopefully, it's behind us. Um, of course, it's very difficult for um, companies in our field to do business in the States. Um, I'm not the only one that has this problem. My problem might have been a little different from others, but if I'm not the only one that have it. Um, we are trying our best to go around it as best as possible. But, you know, there's not a clear roadmap. Um, the roadmap is much clearer overseas. And, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, depending if you're overseas or not, uh, that's where we're going to have to put a decent amount of our resources. But I have family here. So, you know, what is here will be here as long as I can do it without getting into fights, which is my plan. Um, I, I am an entrepreneurial investor. Uh, over the last, since 2000, since 2000, 2000 actually, for the last 20 years, time flies. Um, and I did things like I purchased real estate, um, respectively, did actually very well because I caught the credit boom, the housing boom, and a fundamental need for housing. I actually did it for enough back when people bought houses because they needed a place to stay. Um, I'm very analytical. Uh, at about 2006, 
um, I said, we're going to have to get out of housing because I was doing it to build a portfolio because I wanted to actually make money for the family um, generation after generation. But two plus two started to equal like, you know, 1,429. And I'm not that good at math, to be honest, but <laughs> I figured there's probably something wrong with that particular um, equation. So we sold off. Um, I stood in cash for a little bit. And then I said, you know, I should just short everybody who did business with me. It was really that bad. Um, I started, you know, perusing um, uh, sell site analyst reports. I honestly consider it trash. I really didn't like what I saw. So I, it took time, but I hired my own staff, who's still with me, uh, 13 years later, and we started rolling our own. I sent you links to the uh, original Bear Stearns report. Uh, I, I warned about Bear Stearns six months before they collapsed. Lehman Brothers, about 32 other regional and national banks, Countrywide, Washington Mutual, the entire European debt debacle before everybody. Um, GGP, commercial real estate, residentials. Apple, I went short Apple. Um, everybody laughed at me on CNBC to the following year. And they were like, wow, Reggie, that was pretty good. Uh, I told them Google was going to take over right about the time Android really started. Right about the time they bought Android, nobody heard of it. So we have a pretty strong fundamental track record. Um, I've been known as a self-proclaimed financial guru, but I don't proclaim myself to be a financial guru. I proclaim myself to be someone who knows how to read and add. Um, but the track record should speak to it, should speak to itself for itself. And I don't do this by myself. I have five analysts who help out. Um, so from real estate to shorting, everybody was involved in real estate, doing a very good job on that. Um, I purchased puts and I sold the uh, reports through a blog. Yeah. Well, I heard about in two thir 2013, I heard about Bitcoin. I read the, not the Bitcoin white paper, I read, um, was it the white paper? I think it was the white paper. And the part on smart contracts and my jaw just hit the ground, you know? And um, it took me a while to, to make sure it was real. But after I did, I dropped everything and I went into basically, I took to me use smart contracts to replicate and replace institutions that currently do institutional finance, the banking industry, the brokerage industry, the exchange industry. That was in 2000, pardon me, 2013. Um, fits and stops, you know, busts and booms, little success, little failure, seven years later, and this is what Veritasium is. Uh, we have working product up and running. We had working product out um, as soon as 2013, but we have what you call consider production ready or close to production ready. You know, we have a labels beta, peer-to-peer um, -peer capital markets, basically allowing peers, individuals, such as Bix and yourself, Ben, and your constituency to transfer, trade, sell, buy, um, lend, and borrow private assets between each other without having to rely on exchanges and on banks and brokers, et cetera. Um, it works. Uh, we've tokenized illiquid and hard to transfer assets, gold, silver, palladium, uh, tax assets has been written. We're looking for the assets to funnel it in, in the future a bunch of other things, uh, intellectual property, real estate, um, theatrical trusts, uh, legal settlements, et cetera. Anything that's difficult to transfer, we will attempt to transfer it. These tokenizations are basically a form of private money, private capital, okay? We can take that private money, private capital, run it through the plugins to our um, platform, such as VE Lend, and now you have additional ability. So you could take gold, which sits in a vault with a negative yield. Okay, you can purchase it. Now you digitize it. So you have veritized tokens. So now it's pre Bretton Woods, US dollar style money, just not legal tender. Make that clear. Private uh, representation of gold. And you could run it through VE Lend. And now you can lend it to somebody else and get a yield on it. Somebody else can borrow in it. Okay, and pay a steady yield because they know give or take using uh, historical measures, what their payments will be. Um, this is very powerful. Now, I understand that everybody may be a financial economic guru, but just look um, where you have very, very unstable fiat money. In the U.S., you just have unstable fiat money. Very few U.S. citizens realize this. But um, if you go to Venezuela, Zimbabwe, Argentina, you have extremely unstable fiat money. 
Zimbabwe, who we'll be visiting soon, um, has a $100 trillion bill. Okay. That $100 trillion bill is worth about $1.60 something now, but it was worth 40 cents right before they decided to retire it. They had to retire it because you had to carry so much cash that it was impractical to go shopping in the supermarket. That's hyperinflation. That's very unstable. There, um, a va there's a, a sliding scale of instability. Okay, And just because a country is not Zimbabwe, a $100 trillion bill status, doesn't mean it's stable. The euro is unstable. Okay, The euro has been sliding significantly in value and purchasing power. The U.S. dollar is unstable. Um, I have a $10. I don't have it on. We have a $10 uh, coin. Um, it's a $10 gold coin, U.S. Liberty Head. 1882, this coin was $10. Right now, you can buy it at note value just under $800. That's how unstable okay, the U.S. dollar is. And there's plenty of examples to it. We have a raft of research on the Veritasium on the Vader site, that, that veritasium.com. Um, you go over there, go to research, hundreds, dozens, hundreds of pages of research. So instability is cured by our private currency, which is gold or silver or palladium. Each one has a different um, characteristic. Gold is the least volatile of them. And then we enable people to act upon it um, autonomously. And then we have additional um, plugins. Um, we had a token, the very token, which was a prepaid fee for all of the software um, that fell victim to our regulatory uh, skirmish. Okay. Um, and not don't want to discuss that in detail here, but we are discussing it, or it's being discussed. I'm not discussing it in detail on the official Veritasium Telegram chat. And there's a pin, a document at the top of the page where we go through everything, what's available. Uh, recourse, et cetera. That was a token. The token was used in our system for innovative, dynamic, unique pricing. Um, we had some extreme plans coming into play. We, after getting the uh, platform built and established, and it's constantly being built, it's just that we got it built to the point where it was usable. Um, we had basically an autonomous, self-directed hedge fund, but we shut that down due to regulatory requests. We built that and it was built ahead of schedule. We then built the uh, Veritas, okay, digital gold, silver and palladium. That was built within six months after the, uh, or three months after shutting down the autonomous, the autonomous fund, okay? And that's still up and running, serving over 40 countries worldwide. And what's unique about this is this token, okay, we call it VE Gold, but it's VE Silver, VE Palladium. It has different denominations from one gram up to one kilogram. It's fully redeemable upon demand. So at any time where you want the physical, because remember, it's not a gold back token. It is gold represented as a token. You simply send the token back to us. You pass our KYC. So you're not a you know, terrorist or whatever the government says you would be if you were a bad guy. Put in the address, pay for shipping. And 24 to 72 hours later, you have a package of ounces, grams, kilograms at your doorstep. Okay. We allow you to redeem any whole unit from one gram up to, you know, hundreds of kilograms. We also allow fractional purchases. So anybody can participate. You could buy a fraction of a gram, 40 cents worth, up to as much gold as you can afford and we can source. And you can source almost anything if you put your heart to it. I think it's a phenomenal program. The VE tax act credits um, is also phenomenal. Probably one of the most illiquid things you can think of are tax credits. Most people don't even know you could buy and sell tax credits, but you can. It's not easy. It takes a long time. You need brokers, lawyers, accountants. Um, on the intellectual side, I think you still need your advisors. But the actual transaction, we've made almost as easy as sending a text to the phone. Okay, so th those are several products that are up and running. For anybody who says, ICOs are scams, and you've never seen an ICO build anything. Nobody can ever come to us and say that. We built a lot. As a matter of fact, we built something. It was shut down by others. We went and built something else, and then we built, built something on top of that and building something on top of that. This is all in a matter of two and a half, not even three years, and this is 
very, very scarce funding with a lot of uh, legal pressures on our back. So, you know, the model works for those who are truly, you know, serious about it. And now we plan on taking over um, many industries, hopefully, or we may frame out, you know, it's a risk of a startup. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands this is a real business, it's a real startup, under distress now, but a real business and it's a real startup. And it is not just uh, a token or a speculative instrument, you know. Our instruments were never speculative. It was always prepaid fees, always from the very beginning. Anybody who bought from us had to agree that uh, it. I have a question for you, then we'll actually let Bix you know, chime in here soon. Is, uh, uh, is your relationship or is your partnership with the Jamaican exchange, is that, be, is that able to be re revived? I'll have to ask the exchange. Um, the exchange, <laughs> how do I say this? Um, I, there are a couple of occurrences that were out of my control um, that were probably caused by a third party that caused the exchange to back off, okay? Um, someone stepped in and took the place of us, um, but I have spoke to representatives of the exchange who actually are very anxious for us to come back. Um, but I can't speak for them. The representative may have spoken for, for them, but I didn't speak them to them directly. Um, and I want to make that very clear. Um, we've had arrangements with other exchanges, much, much, much larger, okay? Um, actual agreements, signed agreements with much, much larger exchanges um, and much, much larger economies. But, you know, the reputation damage of getting into a tip with a large uh, regulatory body you know, it caused significant damage to that as well. Um, it is what it is. So we get up, you know, we dust off our hands, clean our clothes and walk forward and keep doing business. Uh, there are not a lot of, I can't think of any entity to offer what we offer. So for right now, um, if you hustle and grind enough, we should be able to get other connections. Okay. There's definitely um, a lot of competition. There's definitely will be entities to offer what we offer, but at this very time, Nobody offers our combination of financial engineering, fundamental macro research, and actual functional working um, blockchain product at the same time on the public blockchain. All righty, Mix, your turn. Um, <laughs> Reggie, thanks for coming on, first of all. Uh, this is actually the first time I think we've spoken in person, so to speak. Um, I've been a not only a follower, but an advocate of, of Artasium and yours because I saw it as a solution to a problem I've been fighting for 20 years. And that's the criminality in the banking system at the exchange level, at the regulator level, at, at the uh, rehypothecation of shares of, of treasury bills. The system we are living in now is so criminal and so corrupt. Um, regulators don't regulate, they, they cover for the, the official manipulation of markets. Now you can't say this, but I can. Um, there's a lot of things. No, I'm not saying it. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I know. Not me. I think I know. a lot of things, but unfortunately, I cannot say what I think. So. Okay. I, I, okay. I know that. But the beauty of when Veritasium came on the scene, Cliff High is the guy who got me into it and said, he, he didn't even get me into it. He said, take a look at this and tell me what you think. I was, I was seeing a, I did see it as a software right away. And it was a, a way to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer capital transactions. And I'm like, holy crap, this, this would solve my 20-year battle. Well, at the time, it was a 10-year or 12-year battle of fighting the, the criminal banking cabal, the manipulation of the stock market, the bond market, especially gold and silver markets. This is the solution to the GATA problem, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee of rigging of the silver market and the gold market. It was the solution because it took out all those middlemen that were in the way and, and rigging markets uh, falsifying transactions. Uh, it took out the DTCC, which is like the the mothership of rehypothecation of assets. And and I, I it just it exploded in my mind and said, this this is a solution to humanity, at least the financial system's second biz biggest problem. The first big biggest problem was fiat money, and Bitcoin was invented to take care of that. The second biggest problem was the capital market criminality and problems within 
that system. And Vertasium came along and, and literally it was me and it still is to me the way to fix that problem. And I see that problem is getting worse and worse by the day. We now have JP Morgan, six traders under RICO charges. We have JP Morgan itself as an entity. This is for silver and gold manipulation. That stuff is all taken care of through a software platform that Veritasium was trying to introduce to the world. It was like you were screaming into the wind and nobody, the people who really got it, I think, were the pushback. And they're the ones who who decided to throw this ridiculous attack on Veritasium through the SEC. Now, who at the SEC did it and who pulled the trigger and and you know, I read through there. Now, you, Reggie, you, this is not you talking. This is me talking. I read through the complaint and I read through your response, and and you were absolutely correct. And you you nailed every one of their arguments. But there was someone else behind it, and on the SEC side, and and something so big that they would have done anything just to get rid of this opportunity to go out of their old system and into something new. This is the problem we've had for over a hundred years with our 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 system of with the federal reserve and always there was always no way out of it and and vertasium this is me talking vertasium was a way out and yes it pissed me off that that they went in there and it's really interesting because the the head guy of enforcement in, at the sec in charge of enforcing the ico attacks left literally the day before they dropped the um vertasium charges his name was uh robert cohen he, it was it was so bizarre. He left literally the day before these these trumped up ridiculous charges the SEC dropped. What? Why did he leave? What's going on? There's so much going on behind the scenes. It's hard to get your head around. And then I, I look at the the settlement. Now I know your hands were tied. I know you're fighting against a machine that is so big that there's it's impossible to beat. But there is something that that struck me is very odd and I'm not I don't want you to comment on it but the fact that they took a huge chunk of ICO um value I think 9.5 million or something like that out of 14 14 5 whatever it was and at the same time the the block 1 ICO settled for 0.002% or something ridiculous of the amount raised it just shows you the the insider criminality going on within the SEC, and I'm saying this, not Rich, I'm saying, and I've been screaming it, that the SEC runs cover for the banking cabal, for the unbacked fiat monetary rig job. Now, where do we go from here is the question. I think we're going to have a, a financial collapse in, the, in this year. This year, it could be, there's, there's a hundred reasons why it should have happened every year for the past 50 years. But now with the, the coronavirus and the, the freezing up of the supply chain and the fragility of the European banks and even the fragility of the U.S. <laughs> banks and the derivative market and the repo market. By the way, Veritasium could have fixed the repo problem. I think the repo problem is a, a multiple ownership of treasury bills that we're putting up as collateral on the overnight repos. I've, I've had many people come and say, hey. Veritasium could have solved this. You can't rehypothecate assets when it's a peer-to-peer -peer capital exchange. I think all this shit is falling apart and going to be very chaotic. And you had the solution. You still have the solution for humanity. Veritasium is a solution to humanity's biggest problem right now, which is not the unbacked fiat money. It's the massive rehypothecation of, of assets that are trading through high frequency trades, through everything you can imagine. Every day on the stock market, 200 million failure to deliver's happen, meaning the, the the exchange doesn't happen at the broker dealer level. Nothing gets nothing gets settled. No money's exchanged. No assets are put into the name of the person who bought it. It's all a huge pool Ponzi scheme. Uh, Bart Chilton, uh, the only uh, CFTC director I I ever had contact with, and whoever did anything worth uh, their salt came out and wrote a book called Ponzimodium, which is about this problem, the situation that everything, nothing is real anymore in the financial markets. Everything's traded in, in multiples and in high frequency trades, millions of trades going back and forth every second. Sorry, I'm going off, but 
Veritasium to me always represented a potential solution to a problem that humanity has. And that problem is bigger and bigger now than it has ever been. So I am hoping with the freezing of the Veritasium 98 million tokens of your tokens, um, and the, there's 2 million out there trading on the markets, some kind of sanity will come after the crash in the, in the U.S. government. And this was actually in Cliff High's data that the U.S. government comes to Reggie and says, help us out of this, this problem that, that we allowed to, to fester over the last 100 years. Help us out. Help us regain sanity in peer-to-peer -peer capital markets. That's my hope. I think, I think it's a lottery type hope. You're either going to get zero or you're going to you know, hit the lottery. But <clears throat> basically what I'm saying is the world needs Veritasium. The world needs the, the, the idea of what Reggie invented. And I think the world needs Reggie to help us move forward in this crazy financial system that's about to go sideways. And hang on, Reggie, before you say <laughs> anything. Uh, you just sit there because you're, you're, and you will be talking, but we we are two guys who have been watching this go down uh -huh. and have been so aggravated at how, how you and your team have been treated. That's what you, that's the rant th that my good friend Big Swear has been waiting to have for, <laughs> <laughs> for a year. And I completely agree with him. And I hope that when, when, when all of this illusion and this manipulation and this corruption comes crumbling down, and if the government does reach out to Reggie, I hope Reggie tells them to kiss his ass <laughs> and walk away. And I would not blame you. Yes, Veritasium and everything would help the world, but make them sweat. Tell them to kiss your ass for at least two weeks. Go to a beach, drink a drink, and let your phone ring, my friend. As I'm, we've, and also a Bix will remember this. Carlos Giolino or whatever. For that, Giancarlo. Giancarlo. That son of a bitch goes on TV, admits that he breaks SEC law or whatever law it was, and goes strolling off like he's, you know, king of shit. When we got him on tape admitting that he and other people in the government on purpose manipulated the Bitcoin market using the futures market to do it. That's against the law. And this ballsy little ugly mother plucker gets on TV and brags about it. And then I do a rant, my video gets slapped down by YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I remember Bix also did a rant. And I think yours got slapped too, I don't remember. But the problem with what we got going on right now is we have honest, decent, entrepreneurial, genius people like Reggie bringing out products that will absolutely correct and remedy this system of corruption. But at, at, at the same time, we got the system of corruption all working together to hurt an honest entrepreneur who is trying to do and provide a good, honest service. And these son of a bitches come out and hurt because I actually met you in Las Vegas, uh, uh, in your hotel. Room. And my friend, I'll tell you right now, you you have such an energy of peace and honesty. It, it I I knew it when I shook your hand. You, and it just frustrates us as cryptocurrency people who who 
who want truth in our markets and want truth in our money, that one of our heroes, one of our warriors are sitting there getting the shit kicked out of them while you got some piece of crap on TV admitting he's breaking laws and nobody from the system goes to mm-hmm. that guy because he's inside the system. Well, I guess George Carlin was right. It's a big club. It's just we ain't in it. So this is me saying it. This is Bitcoin Ben, FBI. You, you've already got my address, you fuckers. You can kiss my ass. You can kiss Bix's ass. And Reggie, don't say a word. I'm going to worry about it. I'm not. <laughs> you have to worry about it. I, I am using my psychic powers, and I'm going to say, kiss Reggie's ass, too, you bunch of motherfuckers. <laughs> Okay, Reggie, what's going on with Barry? Twenty minutes later, <laughs> my dog is kicked out. They're exercising the First Amendment rights. My opinions ought to be held to myself. I have nothing to say about it, probably at all. Okay. All of the opinions given by me and Big Swear are ours and ours alone. Reggie is an innocent victim of our uh, <laughs> of our rantings, and we have a question: Is very gold and very tax a different token from veritasium, or is it the same? There are the very was a prepaid fee to use a platform. So when you buy it, you can use the platform. You get discounts on the products. Um, before the legal skirmish came to a head you were able to buy gold at spot prices retail, which is unheard of. And you had paid up um, storage and insurance, and it was very tight, so you could pass it back and forth. We no longer have control of those tokens, and we no longer have control of the capital behind those tokens. So for right now, that is on hold until clarity is to be had um, and or until we get money back. But the very token had sub-tokens, and it had sub-token categories. Those sub-tokens were VE Gold, VE Silver, VE Palladium, VE Tax, VE, you fill in the blank, as we engineer and create new products. Um, Each product that we create is just a product. It's not a whole package. That product is um, to be coupled with our research and custom consulting when needed, and then we have an entire package. I put out two um, research reports one on Argentina and one on three, actually. One on Argentina, one on Zimbabwe, and one on uh, tax transfer between um, uh, a movie studio, I forgot the name of it, and a medical company. And basically, that's those are examples of what happens when you take our research staff and you couple it with our product. We solve real problems. Um, Argentina, <laughs> we... Um, Actually, it should be uh, obvious, but it's not because most people think their problem is hyperinflation. You know, that's a part of their problem. Argentina's problem is stagflation, and it's real. Stagflation is the worst of all worlds. Inflation, deflation at the same time, or inflation and stagnant economy at the same time. Um, Usually when you have inflation, you have a hot economy. Um, Argentina has both problems. Zimbabwe has hyperinflation to the nth degree. Um, and the tax issue is sort of self-explanatory. You know, you pay 80 cents to get a uh, hundred cents worth of tax relief, which gives you a 20%, you know, uh, difference. Um, stagflation question is interesting because, uh, unlike many other ICOs, we can go out of the technical discussion of blockchains and tokens and tokenomics and go into the real economics of the real world. So it's not just uh, Argentina that's open to <laughs> There they go. <laughs> yeah. That's the perimeter alarm right there. Yeah. <laughs> They're coming in for you, Ben. <laughs> I'll be right back. I got a lot of room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Argentina is not the only country suffering from that equation. Here, I'll let you get a preview. There's this country um, where the middle class is suffering from stagflation. And that country 
is the country that Fix and Ben live in. Oh, and no. That is the U.S. Okay, and of course, we're going to say, oh, what do you mean? There's no one, there's no statistics in the U.S. Well, if you take a look at the median male income, okay, over time from 2000 to 2018, and you take out the actual living expenses, which are not calculated in the numbers that the government puts out, <laughs> okay, housing, transportation, food, gas and heating energy, health insurance, college, and clothing. Do any of you guys disagree with those being expenses that almost everybody pays? Mm, you disagree with it? Okay. Look at those expenses over the last eight years and look at the median income. Significant deficit. Okay. Now, when you have a significant deficit versus of your expenses versus your income, that is a stagnant economy from the perspective of the actual middle class worker. Okay. Fact better with the fact that uh, the reason why those costs went up is actual true price inflation. Okay, when you do cost CPI, cost CPI doesn't calculate or include what it takes for you to be able to survive to make this video. You know, it includes things such as, you know, electronic prices or um, things whose inflation don't affect the regular man. Now, saying that the U.S. suffers from stagflation might seem like it's clickbait, but I'm going to go and I'm going to show everybody how not only is it true, but the solution to that is simple. Okay. If you take the median U.S. wage that was paid in U.S. dollars, okay, and have it paid in VE gold, take a look at it. That deficit becomes a massive surplus. That surplus is measured in U.S. dollars, though, okay? So if they were paid the VE gold versus U.S. dollars, you have some volatility residue U.S. dollars, you see up, down, but that entire period from 2003 on is a massive surplus. Basically, instead of being under the water, you're above the water. And the problem being underwater is I'm not trying to condone speculation, but when you have a deficit between your income and your expenses, that has to be filled somehow. How do most people fill that deficit? Well, some people work harder and work more. Some people save more, but the problem is you can't save when you're not making money. So that deficit is almost always filled by borrowing. And usually borrowing at extremely high rates, like credit cards. When you borrow to fill a deficit, does the deficit go away? No, it gets bigger because you have debt payment. And that, in a nutshell, is one of the strongest reasons why the middle class worker should have some VE gold, gold in general, okay, and VE gold. And I'm not a gold book, obviously. You know, there are many are. I'm not a gold book, but I do count. Okay, and numbers are numbers. So two plus two equals four. You can dislike it. You can call me names. Do whatever you want, but you know two plus two still equals four. That in a nutshell. I'm going to tweet about this a lot over the next day or two. But since it's on the screen, I was working on it, and uh, you guys are here. You get the preview. You get it before I do. <laughs> hey Reggie, and and you know, throw in the fact that the the CPI is a lie from our government. Also, it's it's much higher than what uh, they actually say it is so it makes it even worse i have a question about the software factor now i bought veritasium tokens and i know you can't sell you can't deal with tokens at all anymore right the veritasium token according to the agreement well put it this way it's not according to the agreement um i have no idea what i can do okay. um you know it's not <laughs> it's not clear the rules are not clear which is what all this was about to begin with one thing that is clear I cannot afford another th seconds of fighting with the government. I just can't. Right. You know. So I right. And so I bought I bought Veritasium tokens as a software platform. That's what it was. It was access to the software platform. Do I have access now with my Veritasium tokens to the software platform that you're discussing? VE Gold, V Platinum, tax credits, all that. Everybody has access to it. Okay. Everybody has access. Um, you. We cannot fund these uh, special capabilities that the tokens gave you because not only did they take the tokens from us, but they took the capital as well. So um, it's like, you know, getting a paycheck and then getting the paycheck taken as well as the job. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, we have we are brainstorming some ideas of how to bring material value to the token holders. But unfortunately, because of lack of clarity, and there's a significant lack of clarity, um, we haven't announced it yet. There is, um, there is a fair fund um, where the government is taking the capital that they've taken from uh, Veritasium and from me personally, okay? And they put it into a fund, and that fund is to compensate. Uh, I don't want to use the word because I don't agree with the word, so let's use the word that I have to compensate those who purchased our product, okay? If they don't want to do business with us, if they don't want to take the, and admittedly, extreme risk of us coming up with a way of integrating this back into the platform legally without getting into more legal battles, then you can go to that fair fund and take the money that was ours as compensation. I have absolutely nothing to do with that, okay? If you go to the Telegram site, you click that document, um, there's a person to contact, but again, I have nothing to do with it. It should be obvious that we don't get along, okay? But that's one solution. Um, so there's not, it's definitely not a complete loss. The other solution is um, we get value and reintegrate that value back into the system. But in order to do that from a regulatory legal risk-free perspective or regulatory risk-free perspective, I need guidance. Nothing precludes anybody who has very to seek guidance on their own. Okay, directly from whoever they need to seek guidance from. Right. I'm not going to name who that is, but you know, try to figure it out. You can. You it's guys can go to the. Uh, you can go to the Veritasium Telegram group for uh, to to follow this this saga. Um, and and just just as a note, uh, one thing after reading the settlement, the, the thing that really stuck out is that all the the payment you made that they demanded uh, was basically in cash and. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the and the, which was going to be transferred to the uh, Fair Fund, but the ninety-eight million Veritasium tokens are frozen in perpetuity. Um, is there any way to unfreeze those tokens? And if you can't answer that question, don't answer it. But um, by the letter of the agreement, it says specifically that the Bitcoin and Ethereum are transferred, but not the Veritasium. The Veritasium will be permanently frozen. Um, we can just leave it at that if, if that's what you'd like to do. I um, hopefully it should be apparent that we are two sides of a of a, a disagreement, um, and one side has a lot more money than the other, so I can't comment on it. <laughs> okay. okay, no problem, no problem. Okay. Understood. I um, I personally value. I own Veritas. Veritasia. I personally am going to hold on to mine, and that's my personal choice. Uh, I I see a future where it will have value because I uh, I think that we will. I agree with my friend Bix that uh, that we're going to reach a point where there's going to be a collapse and uh, good Lord. It's here. It's now. <laughs> uh, and I think that Veritasium as a platform and as a, uh, an exchange uh, program will be extremely valuable and I ain't getting rid of mine. So, yeah, I like to jump in and for, you know, the lawyer's knocking back to my head. Um, I cannot make promises. And our number one, we are a startup, which is risky enough as it is. Number two, we're a startup in the U.S. in the crypto field, which is almost unlimited risk. Um, so I would love for things to work out. Not only can I not promise it, but it is an extremely uncertain endeavor. OK, but I'm in it for, for you know, I'm still in it. You know, most of them going through this will pack up their bags and run. You know, I was knocked down. I had to take a nap for a while. But I got up and I'm still doing this because I'm a strong believer in it. But um, there's significant risk um, in doing this and going along with this. But I think the best way that everybody can help us out or even ascertain what's going on, go to dap, D-A-P-P, .com, Sign up. 
try the product out. Go to the research section, read our research reports. Guarantee you, you've seen nothing like it from anybody. Wall Street, analyst companies, or other IPOs, and you know, give the product a try. That's one thing that um, I've always been able to say. I don't hide behind white papers and slick websites. A lot of people don't even like our websites. I didn't even direct you to the website. Go straight to the product and use it. Just that simple. Absolutely. I uh, I actually did that yesterday or the day prior. It, I think it was yesterday because that's when I called up Bix. I think I figured it out. <laughs> uh, I, I, we've actually been on for 46 minutes. I know you have another interview, uh, R- Reggie. We appreciate your time. Uh, Bix, is there any other last questions you got? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy that you've survived so far through this gauntlet of criminality within our government and um, that you're still got steam behind you. And we're going to, from my side, we're going to, we're going to fight the best we can to uh, one, get, get decent rules that we can, you know, live by and, and work around or work with uh, from the, the SEC and the government and two, spread the message that um, freedom is, is, it's tiring. It's hard to get. It's a it's a fight that is worth fighting, though, and and that's what Reggie's doing for the world. And I hope everybody does it uh, from there and do everything you can to get this criminal system out of here and implement some kind of system that makes sense for us for humanity going forward. Okay, thank you for having me, on, gentlemen. And thank one you. more time, if it even seemed like I was speaking about a uh, government. Um, regulatory agency or uh, actual uh, consent agreement. I wasn't. If I did, I did it in error. You did <laughs> great. You did great. Right. <laughs> you were perfect. Yeah. No, no, no. Y- you did a great job, Reggie. I appreciate your time. I do have one more quick question. Uh, uh, is there anyone in the SEC that is s- s- more crypto? friendly, more freedom minded that we we as a community can get behind or maybe encourage her or him uh, in any way. I did read in the news of uh, a woman who's one of the commissioners, if I'm not mistaken, who put out a safe harbor um, recommendation. Yeah, which would <laughs> an awful lot of sense from our perspective, but is that I, retroactive? I, is it retroactive? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can they make it retro? <laughs> can you make it Reggie? Come on now. <laughs> okay, All right, then, Reggie, I have, have, you. Thank you. have a okay. great day, Reggie Bix. Hang on, you and I are gonna chat live. Okay, sounds good. See you, Reg. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Reggie. Okay. Hello, my uh, friend, Bitcoin Ben. Hey, Bix. Hey, oh, man, my heart goes out to that guy. Oh, he, there's so many ah. examples of people getting screwed by our the, the criminality within our government, and I'm I am just I'm amazed that he's still up and running and and still fighting a, a good fight, and and it's a fight that needs fighting. I mean, I mean, we we cannot lie down to the criminality behind things like this. The the re, the the Vertasian platform literally solves the problem that I've been fighting for 20 years, which is the rehypothecation of assets, the market rigging, all the bad stuff that we went through, we've been going through for these last 20 years. It's a solution. It's a solution, and they're taking that away from humanity. I think it's bullshit. I think this is something we all should fight to the end. I'm I'm right there with you. It's, it's why we're in cryptocurrency you know i mean it, it's it 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 was the intent it was the the malice it was the the just the way they went after him mm. and the way that he 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 puts out such a good product it's it's like going after the CEO of Apple because they make the iPhone. 
You know, it's 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 worse yeah. though. It, it's worse. What they did to Reggie, as far as they in, I, I've read, I've got them right here. The the complaint and then the the response and all. I got all. I've read all the documentation. What they did was accuse him of not having a product, and then went behind his back to destroy the Jamaican stock exchange deal, which he had an MOU. He had a memorandum of understanding signed by the Jamaican stock exchange. They went behind his back to scuttle that deal. That is that is fraud from the uh, regulatory perspective. They are they purposefully tried to destroy his his invention, which would be an amazing invention for humanity. Imagine markets that were freely traded. Imagine markets that weren't rehypothecated with all these phantom shares trading. Imagine a, a crypto market that doesn't have 500 times the amount of cryptos ever mined trading every year or a thousand, or, or in the case of uh, Litecoin, two, 3,000 times the amount of Litecoin available for trading gets traded every year. It is insane and, and Reggie had the solution. And it was a, a clean solution. It was sound. It was understandable. And the SEC came in on orders from someone and destroyed it. I think it's, it's bullshit. I, I don't think we should, we as in the, the public, should let the SEC walk away from this baby, say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's already done. I think we should continue to, to petition them, to fight them, to write letters. I know the letters don't work that well. I've been doing it for 20 years at the CFTC. But look what happened. Now the DOJ is going after JP Morgan. Had we not fought all these years, no one would know about gold and silver manipulation. So I think it is important that we we fight for Reggie. He can't say a word. And I've read I've read the agreement. I'm like, why the hell would you you sign an agreement like this? It didn't make sense to me other than I know that the, they have the judges in their pocket too. Yep. So he would have lost what however amount of money he would have spent, he would have lost. It doesn't matter how strong his case was. And his case was ultimately the strongest case you can have. He would have lost because of the rigged judges and the system. So let's Absolutely. fight for Reggie. R Reggie Middleton is the the crypto equivalent of friggin' Nikolai Tulsa. Tesla. <laughs> Tesla. All right. He comes up with a superior product. He gets the shit knocked out of him and his reputation and his family and his all those co-workers i mean yep. what happened to jeffrey uh, Tal talbot talbot you know he yeah. he brought in he brought in a guy who was like had the most sterling reputation on wall street and now he's just off the website i, I didn't ask him about that i don't you know i don't want to go down that path with him you know what happened but I mean, Talbot must be saying, oh, my God, what what in the hell is going on here with our country and with our system? Um, and, I don't know. I, hopefully he'll he'll reemerge somewhere down the line. But he's the kind of guy we needed. This. All right. Somebody. I want you to clip from right now until I quit talking. Trump. Somebody clip this and put this up on Twitter and let's tag this shit out of Trump. Trump. You better get your shit in order because whether you got a plan or whatever, we're tired of it. With either bring it down or have a hot cup of shut the fuck up and let the military take over. Somebody's got to stop this. People are being destroyed, people's livelihoods are just being crushed that the gold and silver community is basically a bruised and bloody community for the last hundred years we have technology that has been hidden from us we have medical advancements that have been hidden from us that have caused lives in fact my dad's which you i'm not starting but this this criminality is costing people's lives and hurting people. At what point does the people quit asking to get beat? Quit or when do people quit asking 
for the government to quit hurting them? And at what point do we demand that it happen one way or another? It is, we, I'm trying to say things without saying them. <laughs> I'm, Reggie is such a good man. He is such a good man. Hardworking entrepreneur comes up with a better product. And our government that you run, Trump, you run the government. You, you want to make America great? Well, it can't be great when it squashes good people like Reggie, you sons of bitches. The man worked for years on that product. And you're going to... Oh, God, it just aggravates the piss out of me. And it's... I know it's it <laughs> Love you, Ben. This, this, this is Bitcoin Ben at his best right now. The, the, the thing that hurts me... Besides the individual pain that they they inflicted upon a guy who's trying to trying to share something he thought about and invented with the world that he knows the biggest problem. The biggest problem in the world is the rehypothecation of assets. It's the rigging of markets. You want to know what the repo problem is? It's the rehypothecation of the treasury bills. That's why they put them in the FICC. Uh, exchange or whatever you want to call it, the clearing house, because the FICC is owned by the DTCC, which is supposed to keep track of all this stuff, and they're not. All this crap can be solved and fixed, but they don't want to fix it because they they got us under their thumb. For the last hundred years, the, the banksters have increased their ability to say, you can't end the system because your life would be destroyed as you know it. Well, it's time potentially to destroy our economic life as we knew it. Kicking the can down the road does not fix the problem. It enlarges the problem and it gives us to the next generation. We're handing off our problems to the next generation because every time we we're, we're afraid that our 401k might go down, we give the banks the ability to bail themselves out. It is time for that to end. And I think it is ending within the next six months, but after that, what are we going to do? It's time to implement a new system based on truth and honesty. The blockchain was our hope for that. Reggie invented something amazing that could do that. And hopefully, and I believe this will happen, the good guys will take out the bad guys, and then we can at least have an, a, a potential for implementing a new system that is based on truth and honesty, but based on the blockchain. You don't have to rely on people. You don't have to rely on the SEC. You don't re have to rely on the DDCC. You don't have to rely on your brokerage house. You don't have to rely on your stockbroker. You don't have to rely, rely on Schwab. You can do peer-to-peer -peer capital transactions that are recorded on the blockchain, and there's no cheating, lying, or stealing. That's what Reggie invented, and that's what we should have implemented as soon as possible. I love you, Bix. Love you, too. I love you, brother. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap this show up. I appreciate everyone coming. and. Uh, and sorry that we got, uh, sorry we ranted, but me and Bix needed this. <laughs> yep, and, uh, yeah, absolutely great show. Reggie, if you watch this in the future, thank you again for showing up, my friend. Uh, everyone have a great day, and we both will see you tomorrow because check out roadtoruda.com or road to root. Uh, on YouTube and also on Twitter and for everyone else it's just Bitcoin Ben <laughs> love you guys have a love great day alright bye bye Bix bye